Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. It's been a few days since we did one of my traditional Star Wars news segments where we go through all of the latest news. We of course had an Acolyte trailer and Tales of the Empire dropped, so we were talking about some other things. We begin with Skeleton Crew. We didn't know for certain if this show was still coming this year and when it was going to be, but today we have official word not from some media outlets, not from leakers and scoopers, but from the showrunner John Watts himself. In a new interview with Collider, John Watts revealed this series is going to release around Christmas 2024, so very similar to the Book of Boba Fett, it's going to be a festive treat. No further information is known, so Christmas, that's when it's coming. And some more awesome news from the show, according to Collider.com, legendary creature designer and visual effects supervisor Phil Tippett worked on it. This series utilizes stop motion, good old fashioned matte paintings, some mocap, and miniatures. So now on to the Bad Batch. We may not have seen the last of them. In the epilogue, Omega becomes a rebel pilot, but she's not the only character we might see again. When Brad Rowe and Jennifer Corbett were asked if there are any more stories in mind, they gave a very cryptic response. In regards to Omega, Brad said, I'm not going to answer that question, and Jennifer replied, nice try. StarWars.com said, we're taking that as a yes. I wouldn't be surprised if there are more plans, and then Star Wars asked them, do you think we've seen the last of the Bad Batch? Jen says, I think there's always room for more stories in various versions. So while this show came to an end, it sounds like the creators are definitely on board for more Clone Force 99. It was so satisfying to see the three brothers retire on Pabu, but there is a big question fans have had that has finally been answered. Why did we only see Hunter say goodbye to Omega in the epilogue? Why not Crosshair and Wrecker? They're clearly still alive because Omega told Hunter to look after them. While well, Dee Bradley Baker said, They wanted a father-daughter moment. A moment where the father on the front porch with their dog says goodbye. And who's been more of a father figure to Omega than Hunter? We didn't get it on May 4th, but hopefully they announce the next Star Wars animated show soon. The executive producers reveal this is something they spoke about from the time of season 1, how it all eventually comes to an end. They originally envisioned all of them working with the Rebellion, but they didn't have any specifics. They said, were they going to walk away? Are they going to stay in the Rebellion? How does it all come out? And it kept changing as the seasons were progressing. But when season 3 came around, and they knew this was going to be the last, they had a conversation about an epilogue. And they both say they brought to it a sense of the feeling of children going off to college, or in the case of Jennifer Corbett joining the military. It was an emotional one. So do they know what is coming next? I'm gonna say they've got a good idea, but it might be some time until we as the fans find out. It'd be cool to see other members of the batch, but if they are going to continue the story, I think the only member of the batch that really needs more exploration other than Omega is Echo. Because in terms of the fight, it's over. They're retiring. And in a way, we don't need more story for them. And so now, my dear friends, we have not just one, not two, but three Boba Fett updates. If you've been following my channel since the beginning, you know how much of a Boba Fett fan I am. And by extension, of course, Jango Fett, and most recently, Omega. So a major question which comes up every couple of months is are we getting another season of the Book of Boba Fett? Is Boba going to be in the Mandalorian and Grogu movie? What is the situation? And over time, it's been a bit repetitive. Some of the cast and crew saying the same old things. They want to do it. They're hoping there's another season. But we've not had anything too concrete to indicate it is going to happen for sure. But today we do have some optimism. A very good sign. The main man himself, Tomar Morrison, is back. The next Star Wars celebration is in Japan in 2025. The last one was in London last year. We didn't get one for 2024, but we're getting one next year in Japan. And Tamara Morrison, who I like to call Tem the Gem, is among one of the first guests announced and confirmed to be there, alongside C-3PO himself, Anthony Daniels, and Ashley Eckstein, young Ahsoka Tano, or should I say animated Ahsoka Tano. So, does this mean anything? Well, it very well might. He appeared in Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2022 to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. So this is what we've got to do. We've got to look ahead to the future. Let's say it's April 2025, you're sat in the conference center in Japan, and you're starting to think about what's coming up. We might have a tease for Ahsoka Season 2 by then, but the really big projects, confirmed for 2026, a year after Celebration, the things they're really going to be promoting are the movies, both the Rey movie, but first, the Mandalorian and Grogu. Does Tem know he's going to be involved? 
There are a couple of rumors floating around and a couple of things people we know have heard that production begins this month. So one would assume every actor involved would have received their script and this includes Tamar Morrison. So this could absolutely 100% be for the movie as Boba Fett or you know, maybe Rex in the present day. Either way, Tamar Morrison is there. And even if he's not there for a specific project, it's always a treat. He always comes out doing the hacker, a sign of respect in the Maori culture. In 2022, he hilariously complained about the traffic in America compared to back home. And he's just a great presence. He's got such a great energy because ultimately he's a Star Wars fan. It's not a party until Tem is there, so fingers crossed. There's a bit of, you know, a bit of oomph behind his appearance. In the sense that he's lining up a Boba Fett return. And the second piece of Boba news comes in the form of Ming-Na Wen. She spoke with Katie Sakov, and she was inevitably asked if there might be a second season in the works. Now, every time Ming-Na has been asked this same question, she always answers with a bit of hope, but there is a bit of a dampener to the fact she's not been asked. But some outlets are taking her most recent comments as something a bit more optimistic. This is what she said. Star Wars fans are not the only ones who wanted a second season of The Book of Boba Fett. So do I. I think the fans, and Tem and I, there's more stories to be told and it hasn't really quite finished. So fans of the show, keep your fingers crossed. And bear in mind, from everything we've heard, to potential leaks from set design, it sounds as though there is going to be sand. Whether that is Tatooine or not, is a different story. And just from a marketing perspective, fans remember Book of Boba Fett, they remember Mando Season 2, and therefore remember Boba Fett's role. I mean, you can't have the big return to Star Wars in the cinema on the big screen and not have some kind of fanfare. I would say it's a pretty easy win. Let's see the daimyo in action, whether that is off-world or on Tatooine. I suspect you'll be helping Mando. And so our last piece of Boba Fett's news. There is a rumor from a reliable source when it comes to all things physical media that the book of Boba Fett is getting the same treatment as Andor, Kenobi, and The Mandalorian. It's getting an official physical disc release later this year. Presumably, there is going to be some behind-the-scenes content, and not just a repeat of the Disney gallery. So those are the latest Boba Fett updates. And you know, now that we've had an adult Omega in the final episode of The Bad Batch, is it time for her to meet her brother? And we definitely need some more Rancor action, and more of Danny Trejo, Machete, as you can tell, I'm down for more Boba Fett. So there I was, just chilling, and I noticed that on social media, Star Wars had posted a new trailer for a Lego special. We've had a couple of these, and this one was very interesting because all the pieces of the galaxy get mixed up and it throws everything into chaos. We're introduced to a few new characters. There are Ewok bounty hunters. The Geonosians get hold of the Jedi's lightsabers. But at the end, Darth Jar Jar is coming into an official project. And not just this, he's voiced by Ahmed Best. And what a great time to post this, the year that we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace. And Jar Jar Binks says, Miss are going to hurt you, sir. And for those of us who've been looking forward to some kind of acknowledgement, there was a minifigure announced, but now we know why. Darth Jar Jar in Lego form. Okay, it's not canon, but it is an official Star Wars project. And this comes out September 13th. Not to mention the official return of Jedi Bob, an unnamed Jedi Knight who first appeared in a Lego set released in 2002. So some pretty deep cut references. 